mincy little perch. I tell you, but perch love these creature baits. Alright, another one, let's get him out. Oh, he's a bit better. He's quite a nice fish. Oh man, did you see the size of him? That was a fish of almost sort of like eight, nine ounces, something like that. That was a good fish. So I'm a real fan of these um, nano lures. So I'm using a one gram um, jig head and a nano um, creature bait and as it goes through the water it kind of flutters down it's it's lovely um anyway this bloody wind guys this wind is ridiculous so a nice little perch on the ultralight he's absolutely crushed that little um creature lure all right let's get him unhooked and get him back okay see you later buddy <laughs> Look at <laughs> And as if by magic, ta -da! Yeah! <laughs> anyway guys, so we're gonna switch it up a little bit and um, we've got Farmer Giles here in Mr. True Crabtree um, fishing styley. Good evening. Um, so um, yeah, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna have a go at using our old vintage tackle. Um, we've both got Mitchell 300 reels. Um, I've got an old Shakespeare strike, which is circa 1980s, and um, young James here has a split cane rod. I do indeed, of uh, uh, a dubious vintage and uh, with no label, but it's a split cane rod. <laughs> Again, it's middle of August, um, and this wind is persistent. Um, so I've been. Um, further sort of like in the drainage ditches and I've been um, playing with my ultralight and catching loads of um, perch and it's been great fun but yeah unfortunately the um, it's getting very weedy up here but yeah we're gonna have a quick play around here anyway and see if we don't catch anything which is probably gonna be the case we don't catch anything but you never know so to summarize this might be Mr Crabtree part one and his very able beautiful assistant here uh, the second uh, guys will, will be in probably will, will be in full vintage clothing, doffing caps, wicker baskets. You never know. That's just James normally. <laughs> yeah, he's right. <laughs> right, folks. So this is James and his um, vintage edition <laughs> internet has not been invented men have not been put on the moon and i've never heard of the beatles <laughs> 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 that's the first cast ever of james's um you hear that buzz your reel so smooth compared to mine mine's really ropey and sure ebay a tale of two stories, either good or bad. I think it's uh, ten pounds, six shillings, and sixpence. This, uh, this particular rod, folks. <laughs> but yeah, when I went to my my summer chalet in Blackpool, I thought, yeah, I should treat myself to a split cane rod. Why not? It's shame good. it hasn't got a make in it. You 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 would have thought, you know, 
yeah, you would have done. And like I say, for the age of it, there's only a tiny little bit of whipping which is coming off of one of your eyes there. But yeah, other than that, it looks pretty good. Right. Oh, yeah, we have that's And we have a nibel. This is very enjoyable. But folks, it's quite late on in the evening. Uh, we've, we've probably hit it at exactly the right time, especially given it's uh, given the warm days that we've had recently. Yeah. But, so um, we've never heard of global warming in the 1950s. Uh, we don't have any climate activists. People behave themselves. Like Mandy. <laughs> So what pound line have you got on there? Jungle rope. Jungle rope. This is, uh, I think, about six or seven pound. And I have done a loop-to-loop -loop, uh, nylon. It's only just come out, folks. Uh, with a spade end hook, uh, size 16, couple of maggots. This is classic Mr. Crabtree ghost fishing. Okay folks, so my vintage um, tackle, so you can see I've got my Mitchell 300 um, which I originally had with this rod and this rod was my father's and um, believe it or not the weight of this rod, it is actually a match rod um, and it is an old Shakespeare strike, um, I don't know if you can see it, so yeah I think it's around about 1980 something, um, very heavy and um, as me and James were discussing um, just a few moments ago how tackle has come on leaps and bounds with the introduction of um, technology and you know you look at this rod and this is probably one of the first gen sort of like fiberglass rods for um, course fishing and um, yeah the weight of it it's um, amazing it's a B.25 action if that means anything to anyone um, so yeah, what, whatever that equates to in, um, in language or whatever, but yeah, it's, it's heavy. And I mean, look at, look at the eyes. So you've got one porcelain ring on it there, and the rest of it is all like wire, stainless steel wire formed um, eyelets. Um, the, the end, at the business end, the um, tip, which has got a bit of porcelain in it, um, the rest of it is just, yeah, these old wire, um, which I should imagine if you do hook into a big fish um, probably ain't going to do your line much good. wonder what the biggest fish that rod has tackled. Good point. <laughs> One maggot left. It's got it in its mouth, hasn't it? Yeah. Hey, rod. Stupid fish. That's a rod. Yeah, Lovely. it's a rod. I love catching rod, as you know. And, and that's the thing, like, you always. As we said before, I always question, but normally the body shape gives it away. Um, rudder are a lot kind of rounder and fuller in a body than roach. Um, roach get a lot fuller when they're um, bigger. Yeah. But um, yeah, you're doing all right with your old split cane rod meal, mate. That's yeah. Good going. I must, con I must confess. Carbon fibre, yeah, it's a lot lighter, isn't it? A lot more responsive. It's got a bit of an action to it, whereas that, it's just like a barge pole, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, what we'll do is um, we'll continue this maybe um, again in the future and I'll get my rod out. That sounds a bit wrong, doesn't it? Getting my rod out. But, um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're just playing with um, James's rod today. <laughs> and this is the 50. <laughs> You are very nice. Come on. <laughs> Look at that. Another rod. A ruddy rod. 
waving around a bloody telegraph pole in the middle. Yeah, no, that's right. That's, that was a good, a good strike. Well done, my mate. Yeah. Slime everywhere. No, it's good. You, you know you've had a good day's fishing when you smell a slime. <laughs> you do, though, don't you? Yeah, man. He's right. You know, you get back in your car and you're like, oh. And then you, you put your gear in the garage. Yeah. And then the next day you get home, you open it up and you're like, what's that bloody smell? And it's like, oh, yeah, it's, that's my landing net. Um, yeah, what we'll do next time is I'll get keep net out as well and we'll see how many fish we can bag. I reckon that'll be quite good. <laughs> That's why um, my wife never comes fishing with me because, um, yeah, one of the few times I took my wife fishing, um, it was a blustery day, a bit like today, and I lobbed some maggots out and they all went in her hair. And, um, yeah, that, that was the last time she came fishing with me. Another rod. No, I think he's all right. Good. So the, the sun is setting. We haven't got long. Um, oh. But no. What the was that? <laughs> um, that that's a vintage disgorger. That one. Chaps, you can't beat a bit of vintage. Well, look at us. Well, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, at least you've got all your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, close. So close yet. Oh, so far. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a better fish. That is a nice rub, mate. Very nice. No, that's a roach. Is it a roach? Hang on. Yeah. You're right, that is a very nice roach. Not bad. Oh, and he came off. It saved you. Hopefully, he did go in the water. He yeah, did, yeah. Yeah, he's gone. Uh, what do you think about nine ounces? Sorry, that was a good roach. Yeah, nearly good found. Yeah, nearly found. I've got the maggots on. Look at that. Oh, spicy. That is a very nice perch, mate. Yeah, thank you. Not bad. Oh, beautiful. It's hooked yeah, right in the right place as well. I do. They happen to be in my pocket. That's because you're a gentleman. Slimy. That's a bad one. As you can see, folks, it's getting pretty dark now. Um, but James is still consistently picking up fish. So another nice roach there. Yep. <coughs> so. Probably going to call it a night very soon because um, yeah, the light is fading and um, both of us have got work tomorrow morning. Um, as this is like a midweek session, um, just a very impromptu quick session. But yeah, that is a beautiful fish, there, mate. That is very good. Okay, folks, as you can see, it's getting um, a bit dark now, so. Um, we're going to call it a night. Um, I think James has done very well with his um, split cane rod and um, his vintage tackle. So um, yeah, you've had how many ropes? About ten, twelve, something like that. And you know, well, yeah, you've probably had about six ropes, four rod, yeah. and a good couple of perch. And that other perch you had was really nice. So it was yeah, lovely, it? yeah, done really well. So um, yeah, the next time you'll see us. Um, what we'll do is we'll try and make a, a full day of it and um, I'll get my gear out and um, yeah. Any Anything to add? Nothing at all, other than to say, at this time of night, in summer, dusk, it is absolutely momentous and uh, here in the Pevensey levels, it's absolutely wonderful. So, uh, no, it was a brilliant idea of Andy's to do the vintage tackle thing and uh, I'm, I'm hoping we will do a part two complete with a proper fake rip off Morgan kit cut so please stay tuned everyone <laughs> so we could make this part one right guys thanks for joining us remember if you like this sort of content 
then um, please consider subscribing. And if you've got any other ideas that you think might um, make a good change to the channel, drop a comment below. Right. Indeed. Catch you guys later. Tight lines.